Snake is a simple classic game that's been around for a long time on many platforms. The aim of the game is to consume as much food as possible, and so grow your snake as long as possible, without colliding with either the map edges or your snake's own body, events which cause the game to finish. The game event loop works roughly as follows. Each update, your snake moves in its current direction, up, down, left or right. If the player input determines that a new direction should be followed, then the snake will begin moving in that direction instead. If the snake collides with the map edges, the game is over. In some versions of the game, the map loops around to the opposite side, but will not do so in our version. If the snake collides with its own body, the game is over. If the snake hits the food block on the map, the food is consumed, extending the snake's length by one, and a new food block is randomly placed on the map. In this video, I'll build a very simple version of this game in HTML and JavaScript to show you how I implement these basic features, including scorekeeping, a simple main menu, and frame rate information. Our HTML document will be a simple HTML5 file, in the head of which we'll reference the snake game JavaScript file which we'll be creating in a moment, and in the body of which we'll create a simple canvas element with the ID game to which we'll be drawing. In our JavaScript file, we'll begin by creating some globals. CTX will be a reference to the 2D drawing context of our canvas element. Game time and last frame time will be used for keeping track of the elapsed game time. Current second, frame count, and frames last second will use for keeping track and displaying the frame rate, and show frame rate will be a boolean flag as to whether or not we will actually be drawing the frame rate. Offset X and Offset Y will be the pixel offset at which we'll begin drawing the game map and game entities on the canvas element. We'll also create a global object called mouse state which will keep track of the X and Y coordinates of the mouse pointer on the canvas if it's currently moving over the canvas, and a click property which will store the X and Y position of the last click event that has not been processed. We'll also use a global object called game state to keep track of the game's current state, such as the screen currently being displayed, the direction of the snake, the delay, move delay that it takes the snake to move one tile in milliseconds, and the time in milliseconds the last move began. Snake, which is an array of points that make up the snake body, and new block, which is the coordinates of the next available food block. The game map width and height in tiles and the width and height of each tile in pixels, the current score for any ongoing game, and a boolean flag as to whether or not this score is currently the new best score, and a best score to keep track of the current best score that has been scored so far this session. We'll now create our first function, start game, which it will be called whenever the player begins a new game. The function begins by resetting the game time and last frame time variables to zero, and then begins resetting a number of the game state properties. The snake array in the game state is cleared, its length set to zero, and the direction of the snake is set back to zero or up. The score is set to zero, and the last move, the time the last snake movement began, is set back to zero, and the current screen is set to playing. The new best score boolean flag is set to false, because we can assume at this point the player hasn't got a new best score, and then we add one entry to the snake body by pushing the coordinates at the centre of the game map, or as close as we can get. We then call our place new block function, which will create a food block on the map.
Oh, well, place new block function for creating a food block on the map begins by creating a loop in which it picks a random XY position on the map and setting a boolean flag that currently reads false for whether or not this position falls on the snake's body. We then loop through the array of positions that make up the snake's body and check each position to see if it matches the random XY coordinates we've chosen for the new food block. If any of the positions match, we set the onSnake boolean variable to true and break out of the loop for the snake's body segments. If our onSnake boolean is still false and the random XY positions we've chosen do not fall on one of the snake body segments, then we can create a new block, a food block, at this position and break out of the main loop. Otherwise, we continue doing the loop until we find a position which is not on the snake's body. Our update game method will behave differently depending on which screen is currently being displayed. If the current screen being displayed is the menu screen, we check and see if there are any unprocessed mouse click events in the mouse state global. If there are any, and the Y value of the click event falls between 150 and 220, then we'll assume the player has clicked on the new game link in the menu, in which case we'll call the start game method. Whether or not the mouse state click event fell on this position, we'll clear the mouse state click event by setting it back to null as no further processing needs to be done with it. Otherwise, if the current screen being displayed is playing, we'll need to update our snake. If the amount of time that's elapsed since the snake began moving from one tile onto a new one is less than the time it takes the snake to move one tile, the game state move delay property, then we'll leave the function as the snake is still in the middle of performing a move action. Otherwise, we create some temporary variables to keep track of the snake's current head position, the coordinates on the map, and the current direction of the snake. We now test if the snake's head position falls on one of the edges of the map, and if a continued movement in its current direction would cause the snake to collide with one of the map edges, in which case we will call the game over function. Otherwise, either the x or y property of the head variable which stores the current position of the snake's head is modified depending on the snake's current direction. We then loop through all of the positions that make up the snake's body. If the current entry is the last entry, the tail of the snake, then we skip this one because we don't need to check for collision with the snake's tail as that will be moving at the same time as the snake's head. Otherwise, we see if one of the body positions is the same position as the updated snake's head position, in which case the snake's collided with itself and we call the game over method. We'll check if one of the previous collision tests has caused the game over method to be called by checking if the game state screen property has changed to menu, in which case we'll simply leave the function as nothing more needs to be done at this point. Otherwise, as the game's ongoing, we'll stick the new head position onto the beginning of the snake array with unshift, and we'll update the last move time to the current game time. If the snake's new head position is the same as the game state new block or food position, 
then we will increase the player's score and place a random new food block on the map. Otherwise, we pop the last entry of the snake body array and remove its tail as we've added the new head position. We don't do this if the snake has consumed a new food block as the snake's length needs to increase by one anyway. <laughs> <laughs>